Is there such thing as a lemon air conditioner? An air conditioner system that kind of like when you buy a car, right? We call them lemons. The car that you keep having issues with seems like it's one thing after another. And it's a lot of times when we're talking about a car that's a lemon, we're talking about a car that's not just having a failure with, say, the electrical system, but now there's an issue with the fuel pump. And now there's an issue with the air conditioning inside the cabin and all kinds of different issues. And we'll, at the end of the day, call that car a lemon. You, you bought a lemon over there. Is that a possibility in the heating and air system? I would actually argue if you stick around to the end of this video, I would argue that it's a higher chance that you get a lemon of a heating and air system, but there's a reason why. So stick around for that. But let me say this. If you've got a system that is under warranty and it's having issues, let's get to the bottom of that. Let's make some long-term decisions here. We see homeowners all the time. They'll throw a Band-Aid on it. They'll have the pro throw a Band-Aid there. And sometimes it's not even necessarily the homeowner's fault. The pro is recommending those Band-Aids. But sometimes having that tough conversation, saying to that technician, I'm tired of having issues. What do we need to do to get a long-term solution here? The unit's under warranty, so the parts are going to be covered. What do we need to do here to get a long-term solution? I can think about jobs in the past where I was dealing with homeowners that didn't want to do a long-term solution. Maybe it might involve a little more cost, even though the parts are covered under warranty, but maybe the labor's not. And so they would make a decision based on that. Let's put a Band-Aid on that. Let's get by on this. The problem with that is obviously the continuing issues that you could have. Again, I'm thinking about some jobs in the past where if there was a leak in the heating and air system, and then you do something to resolve that, you may even go so far as to pay for that leak, but maybe you you're not going far enough to make sure that the complete system is taken care of in a long-term fashion. Adding dye to that system. If you have a system that has had a leak or two, multiple leaks, more than one, let's add some dye in there. Let's make sure on this next fix that we're addressing all the issues. And in my opinion, I know there's heating and air guys that might disagree and I'm fine with you disagreeing. Please comment down below. Maybe I'm off base here. I'm always willing to learn, but a lot of heating and air guys will say, hey, we're going to knock this leak out. We're going to repair that leak, even though they use their sniffer device or maybe even a, a pressure test with bubbles. But the problem is, if you've ever seen that old cartoon where the guy plugs the dam, it's breaking. So he plugs one hole with this finger and then he's got to plug another hole with this finger. Then he plugs this hole down here with his toe and eventually the dam breaks, right? Heating and air systems are the same way. And I'll talk about why I think that is again in just a moment, why I think systems are lemons, why I think systems could have multiple leaks. And a lot of times there's a reason for that. But adding dye to that system, we did a video recently where I talked about how I think that is the number one step that is missed way too often when there are leaks of refrigerant in the system. Don't get me wrong. I subscribed to that belief for years too. I, I said, you don't need to put dye in a system, right? I've got a sniffer. I've got pressure tests. I found the leak. I repaired it. The guy I learned under hated dye. And a lot of guys do. A lot of guys in our industry hate adding UV dye to the refrigerant system. But I will say this. And the one thing they can't argue against is if you do have multiple leaks in that system and you get your light out and you're shining it around, you can see those leaks. You can see if you shine that light up in there and you see that the TXV has a, looks like some UV dye leaking out by that joint right there. And then you shine it up in the evaporator coil. Oop, there's another leak. Those are things that you would miss if you were just doing some of those other methods. Now, again, I know there's pros here that would say, well, yeah, Josh, but I would catch that after I do my first repair and I do a pressure test and I pull a good vacuum, I'm going to catch it. I'm going to catch it in that pressure test. And if I don't catch it then, then I'm definitely going to catch it when I go to try to pull a good vacuum. My response to that is you would have already caught it had you put dye in there. I know you would catch it. You're good. I got it. But you would have already caught it. Now you've got to start all over, go back to repair that second leak. But now to get to what I was talking about before, why I think a heating and air system can be a living even more than a car can be. But before I do, do me a favor. If you're getting any value out of any of our content, hit that subscribe and like button. And in return, I will try to respond to every comment on this video. But here it is. Here's the reason I think heating and air systems more than cars, more than a lot of other products out there can be a lemon, can have tons of issues. And the reason is 
the installer. It's not the equipment. It's not the brand. A lot of the problems that we see today, problems with metering devices, problems with leaking evaporator coils or failed compressors and all the other things that we see on the regular can all be traced back to day one. The day that system was installed, had that installer done a good job, and I'm not talking about good at just making it look nice. I'm talking about doing proper practices like flowing an inert gas like nitrogen while brazing, avoiding the oxidation that can be caused from brazing on the inside of that line set, that copper line, doing other things like a proper purge and evacuation method, doing things like adding surge protection and all the other things that, again, are considered good practices in our industry, but guys do it all the time. Is it laziness? Is it ignorance? I think at the end of the day, I think guys have an ego. I think folks in our industry, oh, this is how I've done it for years. I've installed hundreds, if not thousands of systems without flowing nitrogen, and they all work fine. And those same guys that say that will also have to replace all tons of TXVs, right? My company, when we were installing systems, I'm not saying we never had a failure with the TXV, but it was a fraction, a very minimal, minuscule fraction of what some of these other companies seem to be doing and going through. They're installing systems and within a year or two, they're going back and replacing one, two, 10, a dozen or more TXVs every single summer. And I can say in all confidence, we never had to do any of that. So can a heating and air system be a lemon? Yes, it can, but not because of the reasons you think, not because the factory messed up, not because that brand is, a oh, that's a lemon. No, it's because we can all trace it back. All those issues that we're having, a lot of those issues can be traced all the way back to day one, the birth date, if you will, the date of installation and all the corners that were cut, all the best practices that were not followed, and the instruction manual that goes through certain things wasn't even read. What are your thoughts? Am I off base here? Am I being crazy here? Have you had a ton of issues with a heating and air system? And do you disagree? Do you think that there is a such thing as a lemon and it has nothing to do with the installer themselves? I'd love to hear about that. Leave me a comment down below. If you leave me a like and subscribe, I will do my best to respond to all those comments. If you like this video, I think you'll like this one even more. It's where I go over one of the biggest HVAC myths that we see in our industry. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.